to our family. Hope everybody having a blessed and wonderful day. Here, me and Pops on our way to church. And hope you have a good day. Be safe out here. If you're in North Carolina, Greensboro, it's raining. So be safe out here. Um, just, I was playing a game earlier. Won a few times and lost a few times, but it's a uh, pretty good game. That Rocket, uh, Rocket League. Um, it's an online game. But other than that, it's a rainy day. Hey, it's icy. It's getting icy out here. I guess you can say. But. Other than that, it's gonna be a wet day. A wet. Mm, yeah, pretty much a, a wet day. As you can see, a very, very wet day. This stands to be floppy. But you got anything you want to say, Pops? No, no, no. I just don't uh, believe in waiting. Um, it's, it's expectations of Jesus warming my heart. How does he warm your heart? He warms your heart with the truth, the light, the way that he has prepared for us. Mm -hmm. Because we are made in the image of Made in the image of mm. made in the image of God all yeah. low red creator of heaven and earth. We made wonderful. That, that's starting to warm my engine. <laughs> <laughs> vroom vroom. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's it's definitely a blessing to wake up in the morning and be able to see something new. I expect I expect to hear something this morning. True. You know, when you don't feel like it, mm -hmm. you're going through all kinds of this and that. You know, but you're still going. And you know, I, I almost rolled over and said, "I man, I don't think I'll go today." Uh, if it had, if it had a couple of inches of snow on the ground, I probably said, hmm, "Maybe." Better watch online today. But nothing like going and fellowshipping with brothers and sisters in the world. It's true. Yeah. Man, it is coming down. Well, it's just a bit of snow, boy. We'd had about good seven, eight inches.
Oh yeah, that's the Dollar Tree that um, kids saw me in when they were shaming um, family. It was at that Dollar Tree. Definitely holler at y'all later when so we get at the church. Peace. We love y'all. Keep that love, great love in your heart. So, guys, we made it to church and they worship him. Lots of love. Hey, how are you guys? Good. I was wondering if you guys would uh oh, yeah. make it this morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Hey, how are you? What you need, Brian? Brian, what? And nice little chocolate. I you got it. Hot morning. chocolate? Okay. You know it. <laughs> gotcha. Just regular one? Small or large? Oh, you want room? No, he wants the large. Large coffee. You want room for cream? I can't believe he won't go small. Um, go right. small or go home, isn't that how it goes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Alright,
Yep, still on the ground on my YouTube channel. Awesome. Is it going good? Well? Yeah, I'm at 132 now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Good job. Did you oh, get yeah. to show a little baby lamb on today's broadcast? Yeah. Um, the last one um, at Tabitha's, they got a lamb there. Little oh, baby. It's on, it's on my page. Water. Yeah. So they got a diaper on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my it's on the page from, okay. from yesterday. Awesome. Because I, um, I blog every day. Okay. Thank you. Blessings. God bless Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Squeeze down. Huh. We going upstairs? Yeah. To the 13th. The pup say to the 13th. Uh, 213. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna live again. See you be love. Huh? Be like that. Be like that. Be like Yo, it's not good to walk with a camera upstairs. I almost fail. I miss being at, um, what was that, Joyful Noise, Pop? What they called Joyful yeah. Noise? Yeah. The fire group? Yeah. yeah. Round the building we go. Ooh Warm and toasty. It is warm and toasty. Where? Are you that early? You're you ready? How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. I'm not liking it long. <laughs> What's up, brother? Good morning. Good morning. Did you see any of our prayer group wandering around? Send them this way. I think that's where they find us. Put you over there on the backside, 205, 206, and I'm like, it's even louder over there. True. Gotcha. Uh, this room, we can control the heat and the air back, too. So. All, right. All right. Nice. Well, that's because you put your personal touch on it. <laughs> Hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hefty. My office is down here. Any new practice here? Yeah, this is where we're doing the uh, joyful noise. Where you doing what? Joyful noise. So that's where we used to practice, practice. singing. Yeah. Choir. So they had a keyboard here. They moved us. They moved us around a bunch of places. It used to be down the auditorium. I enjoyed it. And Brian gets in here. She says, Miss Jane, <laughs> can I do gospel rap? She says, What is that? <laughs> she did. I was like, Oh no. <laughs> Stretched her a lot. I did. I, I think I stretch a lot of people. Well, you do. And that's, that's why they, they're evangel... You, you're, some people are evangelistic. You're evangelistic. <laughs> Can't get rid of me. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like... Man, we got, sometimes we got to get out of our comfort zone. Definitely. I was about to say it too. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Jesus said, well, of course, in that translation, you say truly, truly. And mine says definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> I, I can't say it. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. So, what are we about to do now is. Um, start praying so you're welcome to to pray with us oh i pray the holy spirit fills this place this morning 
pray that everyone that comes to those doors is filled with the Spirit. Lord, you know the conditions of our heart, Lord. Let them be acceptable to you, Lord. You can purify us and you can cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Those sins that so easily beset them, Lord, we pronounce those things when we come in the plenty of heart. Lord, it says we don't know everything. We know some. But Lord, where our desire is to know you in the fullness of your spirit, to know you in your infinite ways, to know every step that we take, ordered by you. And Lord, we just desire to be in fellowship fully with you, Lord. We will cooperate with your purpose and your desires. Lord, we praise you and thank you for our opportunity. Lord, I don't want to be a sluggard. I don't want to be lazy in my well doing here, but I want to be filled with the joy of the Lord's strength. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that's come to prayer this morning, that it be acceptable to you and your ears. Lord, that you can move mountains. Lord, we don't like the things that are going on in our country, but we know that all things work together good men to love the Lord who called according to your purpose for this nation for the timing of God. And Lord, what you have planned, let it be acceptable. Let it be acceptable to you, Lord, for the purposes of the calling of God. Lord, you give gifts, you raise up people, you shut down people. Let God arise. Tries to show himself. Lord, you are greater. Lord, is stronger. You are. You have purposes in life. And we cast down anything, anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. To bring it every thought into the obedience of Christ. To bring those thoughts into captivity. Lord, we speak life. Lord, put a watch and guard. Name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me quote from that address for a moment. 
Neither party expected for the war, the magnitude, or the duration which it has already attained. Each looked for an easier triumph. Both read from the same Bible, prayed to the same God, and each invokes God's aid against the other. Then the president's voice began to break as he talked about this war and the price it was paid. In 1863, on New Year's Day, the Emancipation Proclamation was proclaimed. Just because it was proclaimed didn't mean it was obeyed, because the war continued on. It was three years later, on December 18th, 1865, the 13th Amendment was entered into the Constitution that slavery was officially abolished. The war was over, slaves were free to decide their own fate. Every headline, every newspaper in the United States the next day officially proclaimed in bold print that slavery was abolished. It was an incredible day. Yeah. But something very strange happened. Instead of slaves leaving their masters and striking out on their own, the vast majority of slaves just kept on working as if they had never been a law of freedom. Nothing changed. If you study American history, you will find clear up through the Reconstruction period that was the case. Shelby Food in his book, The Civil War, expressed it this way. He said, every slave could repeat with equal validity what an Alabama slave said in 1864 when he asked and thought about the great emancipator, Abraham Lincoln, whose proclamation went into effect that year. Here's what the slave said. I don't know nothing about Abraham Lincoln except he said he got us free, and I don't know nothing about that either. What a tragedy. The war had been fought, the president had been assassinated, thousands of lives had been given, an amendment had been placed in the Constitution, signed, sealed as a law of our land, and yet slavery continued. But there's an equal tragic story this morning, and it has to do with Christians who through the grace of the Lord Jesus 2,000 years ago were set free. And yet so many of us live beneath our privileges. So many of us have never accepted this wonderful gift of pardon, of salvation, and forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our slave master, the devil himself, would like to keep you ignorant and cause us as believers to live beneath <laughs> our privileges. Yeah. The story of the children of Israel is another example. Moses led them across the Red Sea out of Egyptian bondage and they wandered for 40 years in a wilderness experience and never got to the promised land and one of the reasons they never got to the promised land was because God got them out of Egypt but he couldn't get Egypt out of them. Yeah. Let me say that one more time. God got them out of Egypt but he couldn't get Egypt out of them. You see, they were physically not in Egypt any longer. But they were still in Egypt here. How many Christians this morning, how many people who named the name of Jesus have been set free? He that the sun sets free is free indeed. Been set free and yet still live in bondage. Yeah. Self-imposed bondage because you don't recognize the magnitude of how much you were forgiven and you don't appropriate the grace of God in your life today. God writes in our text in verse 32, and you shall know the truth, the truth will make you free. And then he says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you're free indeed. The word grace in the Hebrew literally means to bend or to stoop. When we think about God's grace, it's a picture of God literally bending down to mankind, stooping down to love us unconditionally. Our definition that brings grace into perspective. It says grace is goodness received at Christ's expense. If I were to say to you, let's let me talk to you about something that can free you up from false guilt. Let me talk to you about something that can free you from real guilt. Let me tell you about something that can free you from expectations of others that will allow you to have a new sense of freedom that you've never had before. If I could give you a future that was eternal, that was beautiful and promising, every one of us would want to pay attention. Because it's something everybody wants. 
There are five things this morning that grace does for us that frees us. If you're taking notes, here's number one. Grace offers freedom from pride and arrogance. Grace offers freedom from pride and arrogance. C.S. Lewis, in his book, Near Christianity, talks about pride. He says, he calls pride the great sin. Let me read it for you. He says, there is one vice from which no man in this world is free. Everyone in the world will lose when he sees it in somebody else. There's no fault that makes somebody more unpopular than it is pride. And the more we have it in ourselves, the more we despise it in other people. Isn't that interesting? The more of a problem we have, the more we despise it in other people. Yeah. Be careful about what you hear. Some people, they have one subject they talk about all the time, that just means that they have a real issue there. Yeah. Hello. Mm. You see, it's through pride that the devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice and is completely anti-God. Ephesians 2. Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus and he gives us a picture of what grace is and how we can understand it. And apply it to our life. Paul says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man would boast. That's one of the most powerful verses in the whole Bible. Ephesians 2. Paul said our salvation is a gift. There's nothing you can do to obtain it. If you started right now trying to make yourself worthy of it, there's no way you could ever be worthy of it. It's received through faith. Faith is the door that opens grace to us. It is a gift from God. In Romans chapter 5, Paul talks about the fact that we are justified by faith. I have to have faith to believe that Jesus died for me. I have to have faith to understand that I can't work out my own salvation. It's a gift from God. I don't deserve it. God gave it to me. Hello. <laughs> the moment I understand grace, it takes away pride and arrogance. Because I begin to realize that what I am, what I have, has been given to me by God. It helps me to have loose hands. I'm not as grabby. I draw a line, draw erect fences around my life. See, when I understand grace, it helps me to deal with pride and arrogance in my life. Because you begin to recognize that all that you have, all that you are, is a result of God's grace. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Secondly, grace offers freedom from the legalistic expectations of others. Oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> See, a legalist, a legalist is someone who wants to let their conscience be your God. Yep. They've got a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 8, we have the sword of Jesus and the religious rulers with the woman taken in adultery. And they came to Jesus and they said, the law goes Moses commands us to stone this woman. What do you say? You know, Jesus didn't say anything. He just began to write in the sand. Because I think he probably wrote things about to this, these religious people. They were, I mean, on the outward, they were they were right on, on in the law. But you know, they had attitude issues, they had gossiping issues, they had hatred, they had bitterness issues. I think he may have wrote, written in the sand about their attitudes. What we do know is that he began to leave one by one. And Jesus looked at her and said, where are your accusers? He says, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. That lady began to understand that day what grace was all about. The law said she was to be stoned. The community said she was to be stoned. But Jesus introduced grace to her. He said, I want to give you something that you don't deserve. That's what grace is. That's the case for everybody in this room. God gave you something you didn't deserve. And if you think you earned it, you think you're all that, then you don't understand. You could never be enough to earn God's grace. That's right. Isn't it amazing how we have a hard time receiving a gift? Yeah. 
You know, somebody gives you a gift and your first response is, I gotta go get them something for them. Because we don't want to feel obligated to anybody. Mm -hmm. I remember back in the day when we used to do Christmas cards. Oh my God, it was, it was horrible at our house if we got a Christmas card from somebody we hadn't sent one to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where you get, get one up and, and get, get it in the mail. You know, because God help us if we receive something from somebody and we didn't do something in return. Because we have a problem. Our pride, let me just call it what it is. Our pride says, I don't want to be obligated to anybody. That's why some of us have a hard time receiving from anybody. Because then you feel obligated. And some of us have the same problem with God. Grace has been given to you. You don't deserve it. You couldn't earn it. It's a gift. Yeah. Can we just thank God for the gift? Yes, Lord. Can we just yes, rejoice for the gift? Yes, Lord. That's some of you. Don't you? <laughs> I wish you would put books on my page. <clears throat> It helps us in a couple of ways. It helps us from being so judgmental toward other people. It frees us from legalism. An article appeared in the newspaper of a survey that was done regarding how many people believed in hell. Interestingly enough, 4% of the people said they felt like they were going to hell. But 80% of the people believed they knew somebody who was going to hell. No. <laughs> mm. That's that interesting. <laughs> I ran across this, it's got kind of a fix this morning. I dreamed the other night that death came and heaven's gate swung open, and with kindly grace, an angel ushered me inside. And there to my stomach stood, folks, I judged and labeled as unfit of little worth. Indignant words rose to my lips, but they never were set free. For every face showed stunned surprise. No one expected me to be there. See, when you recognize the grace of God, you have what has been referred to as a yes face. I know faces for people who are angry, who are resentful, and judgmental. You know, I told you about this lady in our church when I was a kid growing up, who, who everybody said that in our church she was spiritual. Because she always wore dark clothing. She always had this spiritual look, Pastor. You know, she's married. Don't touch her, she's married. And I can remember as an eight year old kid praying, Oh God, I, I want to serve you, Jesus. I just don't want to be spiritual. <laughs> I was grateful when I found out that spiritual people know how to laugh and have a good time. <laughs> I was great. It was, it, was, it was one of me to figure out that, that wearing dark doesn't make you spiritual. You can wear green or purple or pink and still be spiritual. <laughs> Some of you have proven that, right? Yeah. Yes. Grace, a yes face. I woke up this morning excited to be alive today. And when I saw the rain, I said, we're at church. <laughs> Spent the last two days in South Carolina working with churches in South Carolina the last two days. Got in last night and Pastor Tom had been talking to me about you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And I said, well, I'm coming. And, uh, and I woke up this morning at 4.30 and it's all rain. And I said, you know what? This is going to be a good day. <laughs> yeah. But there are people who woke up this morning and looked at the obituary to make sure their day wasn't in it. I'm grateful for the grace of God. I, you're, you're looking at one of the most grateful people in all the entire world. I am grateful for God's grace today. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for God's grace. That's I wouldn't right. be alive for, if it weren't for God's grace. I wouldn't have anything if it weren't for God's grace. I am a recipient of God's grace. I didn't earn it. I don't Thank deserve you. it. It's a gift from God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody get this. Thank you, Lord. If you get this, it will free you. Thank you, Lord. Grace gives you freedom from guilt. Oh my gosh, guilt. The guilt of not having done enough. There are many people who are guilty today, feel guilty because of having, they haven't done this or they didn't do that. There's something in us that when we've done something wrong, we want to make amends for it. There's something that we want, you know, we've been wrong or we want people to pay for it. Isn't it something about human nature 
that doesn't want people to go free, scot free. Who's going to make them pay for that? <clears throat> There's nothing more disgusting than seeing somebody get a break. Hmm. Let me ask you something this morning. Can we, can we talk for a second? If you hear about somebody else in this church being blessed by God, can you be happy about that? Yeah. Mm. It, that'll tell, tell you how much grace you got. If you can be happy with other people's blessings. But some people, because they don't understand the magnitude of grace, they're, they're saying, but why did why that happen to them? They don't deserve that. Grace gives you freedom from guilt. The story of the prodigal son is a beautiful example of this. Remember him? The boy finally says, I'm in a pig pen. The servants back at my daddy's house had it better than I had. He had taken his, his inheritance and spent it on wild living. And he comes to himself in the pig pen. And he rehearses. He's decided, I'll go back home. And be a servant. And he rehearses what he's going to say. Have you ever done that? Mm -hmm. You're on the way to a meeting or you're on the way to do something and you're rehearsing in the car what you're going to say when you get there. Mm -hmm. And that's what the prophet son does. He says, he says, here's what I'm going to say when I get there. Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no, no more worthy to be called your son. Would you just make me one of your hired servants? That's what he's rehearsed. When he gets <coughs> onto the property, he doesn't know what kind of reception he's going to have. He doesn't know what dad's going to do. His, his dad could, could say the moment he stepped onto that farm property, hey boy, you took your the money, you took your inheritance from here. We don't want, want you on this property again. You're good luck, and you deserve what's happened to you. You see, that boy had to be thinking that could be the way dad responds. But you see, Jesus is telling this story. And Jesus says, when the father saw his boy afar off, I don't know how far it was, a couple hundred yards maybe, he didn't stand on the porch like this. He didn't call other people in the house would say, look, look at that, look at that boy from the pig pen coming around here. I wonder what he's going to say now. No, the Bible says. Now Jesus is telling the story, okay? The father ran to his boy. And so now, now, his, now the father of son's ready for his speech. Father, I send it to you and against God. I'm no more, more worthy to be called. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And before he could say the last statement, the father interrupts him. And says, somebody go get the robe. Somebody go get the ring. Somebody go get the shoes. My boy who was lost has come home. Let's have a celebration. Mm. Wow. <laughs> two people in this story who had a problem with grace. One was the older brother. Remember him? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, do you, what do you mean accepting him back here? He, he, he does, you know, I've been here, I've been faithful to this house, and I've done what I'm supposed to do, and now this, this prodigal shows up again, and we're going to embrace him again and bring him back into the family? I don't think so. Well, I've heard Christmas and stuff like that. So the prodigal also has problems with grace because he doesn't think he deserves to be back in the family and that's why he's wanting, wanting to say, make me just a servant. I'll be happy to be a servant. You know, an interesting phenomenon I've watched over the years, I, we've had, uh, especially uh, women in our church over the years who, who had a husband who was unsaved, prayed for years and years and years 
for him to be saved. And then he comes to Jesus. He gets saved. And the wife gets mad. Mm -hmm. I'm not making this up. You can't make this stuff up. Mm -hmm. The wife becomes angry. You know why? Why did you wait so long to come to Jesus? She has a problem with having been faithful to the Lord all these years, and then God receives him, puts his arms around him, and loves him like he had never been away. But see, that's what grace does. Yeah. You see, many of us have more of a problem with grace than God does. He's forgiven us. He's put the past in the past. No longer to be brought up, and yet many, many Christians still bring up their past to God. And the Lord said, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, Lord, you, you know, you remember how horrible I was about that divorce I had five years ago or eight years ago or, or this horrible thing that I did. And the Lord saying, excuse me. I don't know what you're talking about. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far he's removed our sin from us. Can anybody, even at 9 o'clock, get excited about right. that? Yeah. Because even if the sun sets free, it's free. I mean, I read that right here. He's free. <clears throat> so if you're not free today, it's not God's fault. Amen. Amen. If you're still carrying guilt, it's not God's fault. Shut sure. 